get these tags up in here. Whoever's there, what up, man? TGI Friday. I can't see who's there because I'm uh I'm tagging certain situations. I'll be right with y'all though. Let me do what I gotta do. Y'all can see me. I can't see y'all. Yeah, what's going on? Four people out. Martin Silver once again in the building. Happy New Year's, dog. You already know. Steve Marrero, happy New Year's. Everybody that's tapping in, man. It was a rough year, man, but we made it through, man. Steve Levine in the building, seven-time champion. Happy New Year's. Make sure you see my cash app if you ain't already did. Let's keep it coming. That's seven-time champ. Brian Ford, like always, in the building. Happy New Year's, OG. Yeah, you know I got to shout you out before. Oh, we got the former champion in the building, baby. Raul Gutierrez came in on time. That means he's trying to get on his run again. That's what that means. Because I ain't never seen a, I can't really curse. I got to chill with the curses. I ain't never seen a dude win five chips just like that. Raul, they thought I was cheating for you in the beginning. I ain't going to lie to you. I'm glad they see that. That's not what went down. All right, let's let it fool up before I start the show, man. Happy New Year's to everybody. I'm glad that you guys made time for me today and continue to make time for me on an everyday basis, man. <laughs> Steve still talking shit. Okay, we got peoples in the building. I think we can start the show. Give me one minute, guys. Let's start the show. Al York Sports, the raw truth. Open sessions and giveaways every Friday. Please tap in. I'm going to chill with the F-bombs, man. You two don't want me cursing, man. They say, Al, you need to chill. I told them it's an L.E.S. thing, man. I can't help it. Yeah, yeah. No drinking and driving. It's the f in law. You already know what it is. Let's get it. Open sessions and giveaways. A lot of news today. We got Gambino, Chango, everybody else doing what they do on a regular New Year's thing. I ain't mad at nobody. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I know the track is banging. You know I'll find them. What's up to everybody? Um, once again, before I start, man, happy New Year's to everybody. I'm glad you guys are tapping in. Uh, it's making it worthwhile for me to come in. Alan Vasquez, I see you. Ivory Doby in the building. Happy New Year's, fellas. All right, and uh, like I always say, go to YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Continue to do the good work, y'all. And let's shut it off, man. Shout out to the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Las Vegas, New York City. LES to the death. Nueva York, Nueva York. Shout out to my man, Dwayne Beeman, man. February 4th, WBA Go title. Y'all already know what it is, man. He gonna give y'all all the info so everybody can tap in. But if right now, it's the Patreon. Credit fix. Never too late to get your credit fix. IG me, inbox me, email me, al.newyork at yahoo.com. Never too late to get your credit fix. Need advertisement? Hit me up and I'll bless you. Hit me up and I'll bless you. That's just what it is. And last but not least, open sessions and giveaways. Tango loves when I say this. The more, the merrier. All right, let's get the sport started real quick. We're going to the NBA. Former Boston Celtics Hall of Famer Sam Jones, a.k.a. The Shooter, has passed away at the age of 88. Uh, won 10 titles with the Celtics during the 50s and the 60s. And what's been happening to him, he's been in the hospital, and every day his body and his soul was getting worse. He wasn't improving. He was getting worse. Rest in peace to Sam Jones. Other news. Big Ben this week's playing his last Monday night football game. Thank God for that. He should have quit in the playoffs last year when he threw for 500 yards against the Cleveland Browns. That would have been a nice way to leave the game, even though they lost. But he decided to come back. And had less, you know what I mean, less of a productive year, man. I mean, 
it almost hurts me to see Big Ben out there. And hopefully, you know, he has a big game Monday night. Heinz Field will be sold out. Trust me. Salute to Big Ben, who's leaving Heinz Field after this Monday. Unless somehow, some way, they sneak in the playoffs. But even at that, they won't get a home game. Every game will be on the road. Salute to Big Ben on a marvelous career. Let me give you some numbers. 247 games, 163 and 81 quarterback record, uh, 64.5 completion rate, almost 64,000 yards, 416 touchdowns, 209 interceptions, two chips, and in my mind, an automatic Hall of Famer, Ben Roslenberger, a.k.a. Big Ben. Ernest Vega in the building. I see you. Other news. MLB is losing a real good baseball player, Cal Seager, of the Seattle Mariners, is hanging it up after 11 years. Uh, I think he got a lot of baseball on him. His brother just went to Texas, Corey. I don't know. They both would have been in the West. They could have had fun. But I guess he just wanted to sit back and watch his brother enjoy that 10-year, plus million dollar contract while his brother plays and he eat the popcorn and all that. But, uh... Seager hit 251 over the 10 years, 242 home runs, 807 RBIs, 1,400 hits, 700 run score, 55 stolen bases. OBP was 321, one all-star appearance. Kyle Seager was a decent baseball player and would not make the Hall of Fame. Other news, LA, Clip LA Clippers will be without Paul George for another three to four weeks. Uh, they'll reevaluate him. In about three to four weeks on his uh, UCL that's a, that's torn. And right now, you know, the Clippers, you know, it look like another year. You know, Kawhi's always hurt. George always hurt. It just seemed like the Clippers ain't never going to win nothing, man. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's what the hell it seemed like. It just keep getting worse. All those great teams they had with Doc Rivers, CP3, Blake Griffin, to now with Kawhi Leonard, poor George, and they still can't wrap a chip up. Real sad. Other news, the rich get richer. Green Bay Packers are expecting wide receivers Marquez Valdez-Scantlin and Randall Cobb. Now, Cobb's going to get back on the practice squad. Scantlin might be immediately put in the game this Sunday. I'm not 100%, but the rich get richer. Packers are balling out. Only thing they lacking, if you ask me, is wide receivers, and they got two decent ones coming back. No all pros, two decent ones that will help Devontae Adams and, you know, Aaron Rodgers, and he'll just have more weapons to deal with, bottom line. Okay, other news real quick. Let me try to do this quick. Gambino coming in the building real quick. Um, all right, before I go to my free play, uh, I'm going to play a game with you guys. Uh, I need y'all to answer either... Yes, dub, like dub nation, or oh, hell no, or oh, hell no. Do you guys think once Clay Thompson gets back and rejoins the Golden State Warriors, and let's say he's back into form, do they win this year's NBA championship? It's either yes, dub on your comments, or oh, hell no. And I want everybody to contribute, man. It's real simple. Johnny Food Throttle in the building. I see you, baby. OBJ. Little OBJ. Happy New Year's, dog. Yeah, answer me, y'all. Real simple. Yes, dubs? Or, or hell no? You ask me, with a healthy Clay Thompson, they at least make it to the chip. So I would have to say yes. I'll say yes, dubs. Okay, let's go to free plays real quick before Gambino taps in. Last week, Noah Parker went 2-0. He gave out the Browns plus 7.5 and, and the Bills money line. Two easy wins. You see the Browns lost by two, and the Bills did their thing at New England. My man Jeff, my man Sportsbook Jeff went 1-1. One one. He gave out Arizona at minus 2. Uh, they came up short against the Coast on that Saturday night. And he liked the, uh, the Bengals over the Ravens, 4.5. The Bengals rolled them. And I went 2-0 on two teasers. I gave out the Packers money line and the Bills plus 9. And then I gave out the Chiefs minus 2 and the Raiders plus 6. All of them handled their business. We went 5-1 and one last week, 3-3 three and three the week before. I advise y'all either start jumping on our bets or use it as tools and make some money. Real talk. 
And uh, this week we got either the free plays this week. Then Gambino's going to come tapping in. Ernest Vega said the Bulls and the Warriors in the chip. Obviously, Ernest Vega is a Chicago Bull fan, so I can see him doing that. Now, I'm a Knicks fan. You ain't going to hear me say the Knicks and the Warriors. That's all I got to say. Free picks. We got Jeff. He likes Utah tomorrow. He, I don't know where he get plus six. I looked all over the lines. I see four, four and a half. So if you could get the Utah Utes versus Ohio State at plus four, four and a half, jump on them. He likes Utah in college football. And in the NFL, he likes the Bengals plus four and a half at home against the Kansas City Chiefs. So if you could buy it up to five, buy it up to five. Noah Parker got two games. I didn't expect him to throw me. Uh, he likes Buffalo Bills minus 14. I could kind of see that because if you follow the Bills, when they win, they usually blow teams out. Even last week in Foxborough, they blew out the Patriots. I mean, to me, that was a blowout. I mean, maybe not by score as much, but it was a blowout. And uh, he likes the Patriots minus 16 and a half. So he got two huge numbers this week. Bills 14, Patriots 16 and a half. Now my two teasers, get a pen, write this down. I like the Bengals from plus four and a half to ten and a half. Six point teaser. Four and a half to ten and a half. Tie that up with my Dallas Cowboys at home against Arizona from six and a half or six to a pick em. Real simple, to a pick em. Happy New Year, everybody tapping in. Suge Knight, Happy New Year, everybody, man. I love you guys, especially for checking in on a day like today. It's crucial for me because my ass got to go to work right after this. And trust me, I'm not happy. And my other teaser, Buffalo minus seven from 14 to seven. I think they win at least by like 10, 14 points. Um, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, that's right. I'm going to take Big Ben in his last home game and bring him from three and a half to nine and a half. If you could get four and bring it to ten, that's a beautiful number because they're not going to lose more by ten to the Cleveland Browns on his last home game in Hines Field. Those are your free picks. I'm going to repeat them quick, real quick. Jeff likes Utah plus four, four and a half. Bengals plus five, four and a half. Noah minus 14. Buffalo minus 16 and a half. The Patriots. My teasers, Bengals 10 and a half, Cowboys money line. The other teaser, Buffalo minus seven, Steelers plus either nine and a half or 10 and a half. Whatever number you could get, either 10, everything's gravy. Let me get Gambino in the building. Don't go nowhere, guys. About to turn it up a little something. <clears throat> Yo, what up, baby? What's poppin', everybody? Happy New Year. Okay, hold up, Gambino. Hold up. Let me hear you again. What's poppin'? Happy New Year, everybody. Okay, perfect. I know exactly what to do. Gambino, if you can, either lift your head up. There you go. Right there. Don't do nothing else. Don't do nothing else. We're going to start real quick college football playoffs. Everybody I spoke to Vegas and Vegas thought Cincinnati would either win the game or definitely cover the 14. Either happened. Talk to us on what you've seen. Alabama Crimson Tide running all over the Cincinnati Bearcats. And your fastest way of doing it, talk to us. Alabama's just a bigger team. That That's really what it was. You know, uh, Cincinnati had a great year, but they just didn't have the athletes that could compete with an Alabama. Like, that that's just bottom line. Alabama too strong in every area. Um, I kind of knew – I mean, I took – you know, I, I took Cincinnati plus 20 and a half on the Chiefs and plus 23 and a half. I split those. I kind of knew Bama was too strong for them, but I just thought that Cincinnati would just psych all of us out and make it a game, and it'll come down to the wire, and that didn't happen. Nick Sabian and the Clemson Tide cruise again and demolish the Cincinnati Bearcats. What was it, 27-6, to 6, something like that? Yep. Demolish them. Okay, let's go to game two, 
where we've seen another demolishing. The Georgia Bulldogs are up at halftime, 27-3 over the Michigan Wolverines. And everybody, from what I know, like the Wolverines, except a couple of people. From the little bit, if you've been looking at the game, what do you see in that game? I see that Michigan is still trash. They'll always be trash. That Michigan Watch your mouth, trash. dog. Huh? Watch your mouth. They're not trash. Come on, bro. Watch your mouth. Come they, on. They've been playing good this year. You can't say they trash. You can say they can't play with Georgia. I'll give you that. But don't say – I mean, please don't say they're trash. Because I like Jim Harbaugh company. The game. Yeah. They're as a respectable team as Don Mattingly with his mustache on. Oh, wow. Okay, so now that you said that, uh, Georgia <laughs> I, Bulldogs look too strong for Michigan. And I don't even like the Georgia Bulldogs. This makes this even worse. Right, right, right. Let me get a word real quick. Um, I thought it would be a better game out the gate. Georgia's just rolling them. I'm hoping that Michigan can make it a little game in the second half. You know, just make it a game. Make it, you know, worthwhile for the viewers can have something to watch. And the Bulldogs are rolling 27-3. Now, let me jump to another subject real quick, Gambino. Uh, John Earl Madden died early in the year. You got to put your face closer. You're starting to disappear again. Yeah, don't be scared of the camera. I told you that. Uh, John Madden passed away, and... um. My question to you is, what did he leave behind to Gambino as father's like Anything great that you liked about him? Anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Just talk to us about that. John Madden. Well, for one, uh, you know, he, he seemed like uh, a real pleasurable individual. Like, you know, I didn't have a chance to meet him ever, but he seemed like he was a pleasure to be around no matter what. Um, he, you know, he basically created, um, a winning mentality in, in Oakland, you know, which was, you know, you're a Raider for life, no matter how long you're on the Raiders and Madden, the game itself, it's probably one of the greatest games ever created. You know, my, myself, one of my personal, you know, memories is, being a 10-year-old kid and mopping the floor with my uncle in Madden mm. and just been mopping people ever since, you know, Madden came out, you know, on, on Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And, you know, it's, it's a sad week. You know, he, he was a great, he was a great person, a great ambassador for the game. And he, he's certainly going to be missed. And if they don't put him on the cover of every Madden that comes out next year, whether they have an exclusive edition or they just have some BS, you know, fifty nine ninety nine, John Madden needs to be on, on, the, on the cover because he changed the way sports games are played. He changed the way, you know what I mean? Like there are more kids who know about Madden because of the game than they do about his coaching, which is sad, but it's the reality of the situation. Yeah, that's a great point. I like that. That's a great point. Um, One of my idols, obviously, uh, especially I used to love when he used to team up with Pat Summerall. No better doing sports in my book. Uh, John Madden is just an icon. He turned, he turned the Oakland Raiders around, had the best winning percentage ever at 76%, something like 103, 32, and 1. The guy breathed football. When you talk about somebody that breathes anything, John Madden breathed football. John Madden was to the point where, like, he didn't care about gardening. He didn't care about going to the movies with his shorty. He didn't care about any hobbies. The only thing that consumed John Madden was football, because I read up on him. I'm talking like I know him. No, I know of him. Let me make it clear. I know of him. And like I said, he's one of my idols, man. I love the guy. The guy, big old smile, but yet he brings it on every every broadcast. I didn't I didn't get to watch him coaching. A little too young to understand it, the game then, but from my, looking at the YouTubes and following, the guy was an amazing coach. Absolutely. Not only because his winning record, I mean, just the fact that the X and O's of the game were just like incredible with John Madden. Absolutely. And like when you see in, in the broadcast, 
the way he breaks it down, you know, I just put out a video the other day on John Madden. I ain't even got to get into it, but I got to bring it up again today because, you know, that's my boy, man. I'm going to miss John Madden, even though when he was out there, I still miss him. You know, I like Al Michaels. You know, Collinworth is okay. Romo's all right. Aikman's all right. But to me, there was nothing like John Madden, like I said, especially when he teamed up with Pat Summerall. Right. Hannibal in the building. I see you. Jeff Beth in the building. I see you. The okay, best, let's go to games to watch. sports anchor duo ever. Yes. Pat Summerall and, and John Madden. Exactly. <laughs> Salute to John Madden. Rest in peace. You're going to unite with your boy, Pat Summerall, and y'all could do this all over again in heaven, baby. Okay, let's go to games to watch. You ready for this? Absolutely. Okay, we're going live to Arrowhead. No, I'm lying. I'm lying. We're not going to Arrowhead Stadium. We're going to Paul Brown Stadium with 11-4 and four Kansas City Chiefs are playing the 9-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals, and the line is plus four and a half for the Cincinnati Bengals, and the totals is 50 and a half. Your take on this game real quick. Like the Chiefs, like the over, and uh, I think that it's going to be a really high-scoring game. I think okay, you're probably um, looking at a 35-30 type game. Okay, I, I, I think similar. That's why I teased the, uh, the Bengals up to like 10 and a half. I see something like 34, 30, 27, maybe 31, 27. They might cover the four and a half, but I like them better with the teaser. Should be a real good game at Paul Brown Stadium. Okay, game number two. Let's go to Nissan Stadium where they're eight and seven. Two attack Viola and the Miami Dolphins are visiting the 10 and five Tennessee Titans. There you go hiding again. You keep hiding like my little dog used to. Keep My your bad. face first, front and center, baby. Okay, so the Titans are minus three and a half at home, 39 and a half. You'll take I I like the Dolphins in this one, believe it or not. I'm I'm pretty anti-Dolphin, but I kind of feel like the Dolphins are gonna uh they're gonna put this together. I kind of yeah, I can see them covering. I can see the Tennessee winning by three points. I, I unless kinda... you mean unless you mean Dolphins to win the game outright. I do believe the Dolphins are going to win the game outright. I think it's going to okay. be a game. I'm thinking maybe like 2017, 2317, somewhere in that in that realm. But um, I'm expecting – I'm liking the Dolphins, and I'm liking – I think it was really good for the Dolphins to draft J uh, Waddle if they were going to, you know, try and make it work with two of the – Tungalow or whatever the gentleman's name is. Right, right. Well, my take is like this. I'm happy for Miami fans because when you got to look at Justin Herbert doing damage with the Chargers, knowingly that you could have picked him ahead of Tua, and Tua was injured, and when he played, he looked like basically shit. To see him, to see the whole team get it together, because it ain't, it ain't just him. It's the whole team winning the games. But he is playing his part. And I'm happy to see that because it's not looking like a bus. I think it was I, looking honestly, like a bus there for a little while. I, I agree. And I and not to, to just play a little bit off Herbert. I think Herbert then they got the wrong head coach out there in San Diego and they need to find they need to find LA, LA. let's get it right. They play LA. In LA. Excuse me. I think they got the wrong coach out there in LA. And right. I think it's time they, they get somebody who uh, can, can can coach them up. Can coach them up and, and make that, that Charger team good because Justin Herbert can, can fling that thing, man. Yeah, he's an animal. 10, 15 years easy in the league. Okay, uh, I would have to say that it depends if Brown's playing Julio, Foreman. Uh, gun in my head, I'll probably say Miami covers the three and a half. They keep it close and lose by a field goal. Okay, let's go to Lucas Oil Stadium as the eight and seven Vegas Raiders travel up to play the nine and six Indianapolis coach. The line is minus seven for the coach, but the question is, I don't think Wentz is playing. I mean, I think it's 60 40. He's not. I don't know if he got the COVID. He's not playing. If he passed the protocol. It's a lot of things still. Left unsaid because he could easily pass the protocol. Right. So if he's not in the game, I love the Raiders to cover. Right. If he's playing, 
I see the coach winning at least by seven. That's my take. What's your take real quick so we can move on? My take is that the Raiders probably win by a touchdown regardless. Oh, you like the Raiders? Yes. Okay, okay. So I, I hear you, man. I hear you on that. I, if Wentz is playing, I think, you know, they win if he's not playing the Raiders cover. Okay, let's go to AT&T Stadium, something I know you love to hear. 10-5 and five, Arizona Cardinals who've been struggling tremendously this year johnny mullins in the building louis louis in the building i see you guys thank you for tapping in versus the 11 and 4 dallas cowboys cowboys coming off a vicious horror flick sunday night football game against Woo! the washington bang, bang, football team Cowboy gang. with dan quinn had that defense all over taylor Haneke. he was drunk out there he looked like he drank a couple of Heinekens, to be honest with you. Every time he called, he's falling on the floor looking all drunk. Dan Quinn looks like he's starting to know how to play with his little pizzas now. And I did mention it before. I said Quinn will change our defense, but he needs time because he has to learn these individuals' best ways of working, just like what he did with the Legion of Boom. He didn't do it overnight in Seattle. Oh, Once yeah. he learned their strengths is when they started rolling on defense. And right now, the Cowboys look like they're rolling. But let me tell you, son, they better not let Kyler Murray rip them up this weekend, Bino. So my take to you, the line is minus six for the Cowboys. What's your take on this game Sunday in AT&T Stadium? I think the Cowboys won by about 10 points. I think it's going to be about uh, 28. 18, I think it'll be about 28, 20 game, give or take. Right. Uh, I think Kyle Murray is going to be running for his life. Wow. If they put any pressure on Murray, like, you know, you know, Clint Berry's going to fix that. He'll probably put two tight ends extra to chip block them ends. He's going to have to. That's the only way they're not going to pressure him. But if they get any pressure, the Cowboys are going to roll. But if they don't pressure Murray, I see a real good game down to the wire. But I'm going to take, of course, my Cowboys. I gave them on the teaser on my free picks today. Okay, last but not least, we're going down to Hines Field where the 7 and 8 Cleveland Browns are playing the 7 7 and 1 Pittsburgh Steelers and Big Ben's Roslinberger's last home game of his career. The line is three and a half for the Browns. 41 totals, your take, Gambino. I, as much as I, I think they're going to play their hearts out for Ben Roethlisberger. I don't think it's going to help, as I think the, the Chiefs are playing hot. The they're, Browns, the Browns. Oh, the Browns. Yeah. You, oh, the Steelers are going to kill the Browns. Oh, you like Steelers to win now? Oh, yeah. Well, I teased them up. I teased them up. I think they're going to play tight. That's why I put them up to like nine and a half, ten and a half, whatever number you can get. Three and a half. I, I can see Cleveland winning by a field goal, worst case scenario. I got Real big gonna... game for Cleveland. If Cleveland wants to get in, they have to win this game here. If not, they're not making it. Same thing for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I'd rather see the Browns. I think the Browns would be a more fun to watch on a roll in the playoffs than the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just I my agree. opinion. I agree. Okay, with that. so. Real quick, since we got some more extra time, I didn't know we was going to finish this quick. I just posted something earlier, and I told everybody, with the addition of Clay Thompson coming to the Golden State Warriors, let's say, crying out loud, Clay gets back to form 80%. Let's just say 80% he's back. In your opinion, do the Golden State Warriors win the chip? If yes, explain. If no, explain. Talk to us. Uh, yes, I, I think so. I think realistically, they're only the only competition that they have, I think, is the Suns. I don't really think anybody in the East is competition for the Warriors, as the Warriors are a more complete team than I believe the Bucks are, than I believe the 76ers are, uh, than what I believe the Heat are. So I think if Klay Thompson comes back and he's 80%, I think, 
I'd be very afraid if I was the NBA. Right, right. Well, very, very afraid. Well, right now, I think they're like 27 and 7, if I'm correct, give or take. I mean, they only get better with Clay. I mean, do the math. Agreed. You got a future Hall of Famer, all star, great two guard that can ball out. And let me give you an update right here. Georgia up 27 3, 13 minutes left in the third quarter. Michigan's getting whooped. They get whooped. Hopefully they can make it a game. Okay, Gambino, anything you want to say uh, before we hang it up? I might get yeah. Ernest Vega in the building if he's still in the building. Or if anybody want to come on live, this is your opportunity now. New I Year's want, Eve, I want come on know, live. I want you to know that this diehard Cowboys fan is going to be in Philadelphia next weekend at the Eagles-Cowboy game in Financial Field. Repping the Cowboys in Cowboy <laughs> colors. There you go. There you so go. You in Philly, you at the game, you see a white guy yelling, let's go, Cowboys. Let's. It'll let you know it's the heavy Don, top five dead or alive, and I'm showing out for the Cowboys. Bang, there you bang, go, baby. Cowboy gang. Happy there New you Year. Go. There you go, baby. All right, listen, man, Gambino, thanks for coming on board. You know, Happy New Year. Uh, thanks for making time to get in on. I know today's a tough day. Everybody's sacking up with the family and all that. We're going to get in contact soon, and I'm shipping your shirt out right on the New Year, right after the New Year. Awesome. Copy? I appreciate being a part of the Out Sports, uh, Sports Show all the time. I love I love having, you know, all you guys comment and, and throw ideas out there, and I, I'll always be a part of it. So thank, thank you. Thank you, buddy. You have a good one. Enjoy with the family. We'll get up soon, Gambino. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right. All right, brother. Okay. Have well, love, baby. Okay. All right, guys. That was Gambino in the building. Uh, Ernest Vega thing. I think he said he wanted to get mic'd up. Uh, whoever want to get on, man, listen, man. I'm not going to take advantage, man. I'm going to work with y'all. So you want to get on, it's your opportunity. It's New Year's Eve. I'm doing it a little different. As you see, I'm not as crazy as normal. And plus, I got to slow it down anyway. You two don't like me to be crazy. They 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 play with my views. They already told me so. But anybody want to get on? Vega, if you're in the building, if Chango in the building, uh, let's get on right now, man. If not, let me talk a little bit of NBA, but hopefully we can get somebody that want to get on. In the NBA, we're going to start off in the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic Division. The Brooklyn Nets lead it at 23 and 10. Sixers are 19 and 16. It's beside today's games. Knicks 17 and 18. Celtics 16 and 19. And the Raptors are 14 and 17. Hold on, let me pick this up. Me a minute, guys. Chango trying to get in the building. There we go, baby. Yo, what's up, baby? How you doing, man? Chango in the building, baby. Yes, you sir. Made it. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? You made it, hey. baby. How you doing, brother, man? All right, real quick, Chango. I was just talking about your Raiders. Yes, sir. Eight and seven. Two right. big victories in their last two games. They go on to Lucas OU Stadium. Now, I still don't know the exact update with uh, Carson Wentz. Is he playing or not? I was too busy today checked, to look up. Last time I checked, he had it, he had not passed the, the COVID protocol, so I don't believe he's going to be playing that game, no. Okay, so that's a so. huge what advantage. Up, Brian, for your squad. what up, baby? How you doing? That's a huge advantage for your squad. Now, my question to you. I, so as well. I like Carson Wentz, but I think he's still got a lot left in the tank, man. Oh, he I, do. I, I he like do. Him. He, uh, you know, Frank Wright is learning how to use him, man. He's producing. Yeah. He's producing. Um, But if you don't play, to me, that makes it a toss up game. I think you guys can go up there and get that. Got, as long as Derek Carr don't turn the ball over and move the chains. That's a winnable game because I know the coach could run, 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 but the Rays will have to stack the see, box and let the backup beat them. See, my thing is, though, hey, real quick, I hear like an echo in, on your side. I hear like an echo, like my voice and yours. 
Um, All right, hold on. Let me let me close the window. I got the window open. Let me close it real quick. Yeah, I ain't want to be in here sweating. Yeah. Not here. Um, what's it called? Um, yes, I do. I do agree with you that it is kind of an advantage, but at the same time, I don't think so because I like Carson Wentz. But the thing is, I've noticed about the Colts, and you really got to give it up to him. Jonathan Taylor is having a fucking year, man. MVP. Man, he is having a year. MVP. One thing I'm, one thing I'm worried about is. My my defense has struggled a lot through the through the air, but against the run in some games, I've actually been pretty surprised with my squad. Right. But um, we're gonna be down Carl Nassib, who um, he he had we just recently put him on the COVID uh, the COVID list, which I think to me is kind of a huge blow because he's one of those big bodies that's solid and that's pretty good against the run. Right. Um, uh, another thing is uh, we signed we got uh, we got a lot of people on the COVID list as well. We just signed. Um, a guard and um, I believe uh, some other tackle. I'm not mistaken. I forgot, I forgot the names. But right. um, this COVID thing, man, it's like what you said a couple of days ago when we were talking, you know, face face. Yeah, it's better like uh, wildfire. It's in every people, sport. Yes, people gotta, people really yeah, gotta take account sport. for this COVID shit. People really gotta take account for COVID, bro, because it springs up like that, man. Yeah, and at least, has, at least we're not. From my understanding, the death, the death count ain't crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, it yeah. seems like. We're detecting it quicker because it seems like every week, ten people got it on on, on yeah. another team. So it's like ten plus people. Yeah, on it's every like other it's, team. it's hard to handicap games like that too because you gotta know who's playing, who's not playing. He might play, exactly. so it's very hard for handicap. Let me give you an update. Michigan just got a first down, down twenty-seven three, third quarter, eleven minutes left. I'm hoping they can make it a game, but uh, hey, finish up, dog, finish up. I, I like me some Jim Harbaugh, man. But uh, real quick, you know, um, <clears throat> um, good news for my squad. We got Brian Edwards back. We, we put him on the COVID reserve list, I think, a week or two ago. We got him back. Um, we're still going to go out there. We got we got JJ, as far as I'm, uh, as far as I'm aware. We have JJ. We still got Hunter Van Fro. Darren Waller's still going to be out. We put him on the reserve list. Yeah, when he coming list. back? Every week, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Then he never come back. I don't know, man. To me, though, I'm... I, I'm not sure. I believe possible, maybe if if we can make the postseason, maybe maybe the last game. But with the COVID shit, I'm not I'm not sure now. But right. if, we, if we could if we could somehow some way get into the postseason, maybe he comes back then. But I'm not I'm not I'm not hanging my head on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so, wishful thinking. I think if y'all can yeah. have a winning record out of everything you guys went through this year with the Gruden, yeah. the Jacobs, the Henry Ruggs the third. All these injuries. Yeah. I think a winning record, believe it or not, would be a victory for the Las Vegas Raiders. For Players sure. might be acting a little bit too much. You know, hey, I can sleep. I can sleep. I can sleep good at night knowing we had a winning season finally. Shit. Right. Um, <laughs> but, no, that's real talk. You know, since Jack Del Rio, I mean, shit. Seriously, uh, but. You know, I think I think that my team can go into Lucas Oil Field. I think we can do some damage. If, and like you said, if Derek Carr, look, we both know what my quarterback can do. He can sling the ball and he can put it in tight windows where it needs to be. But I need I need my receivers, like I need Foster Moreau to do what he did last game. Catch the fucking ball. Catch the ball and hold on to it. Don't let go. That's one thing that my team has struggled with the last couple of games. They they drop passes and they fumble a lot. Ever since that Chiefs game, I see my team start fumbling the ball, and I get a little worried every now and then. You can't win games if you're giving the ball back to the other team. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And you just can't can't turn the ball over. Now, if um, somehow my team can shut down Jonathan Taylor, then I think we have a shot. I think we have a shot. Yeah, so I, if there's no win, the you definitely got a shot. If there's no win, okay, real quick, let's move on. The great John Earl Madden died. John Madden. I know it's a little before your time, but you told me you did some homework on him. Uh, give us something about John Madden that made you like him, love him, or just respect him. Talk to us. <coughs> well, to be honest, well, to be honest with you, man, what really got me into Madden, um, you know, like like Gambino said, you know, 
it's had a lot of people going because of the football game, you know, because of it's the name of the NFL game. But no, you know, from what I've read up on him, you know, he was a really he was a really genuine person. From a lot of interviews that I've seen with people who were close to him, were around him, really genuine person. Like you said, he lived, he lived, breathed, slept, ate football. That's right. that's as far as anything that I've heard and read, it was everything was football. He actually was in the NFL. He was drafted by the Eagles as a nose tackle. You know what I'm saying? And that, and that's crazy because um, I actually really didn't know that. And that's actually that's actually something that blows my mind. Um, no, that's deep. That's, that's deep. Cool. You know that's And you know he was cool. also a linebacker coach in '67 for two yeah, years uh, before uh, becoming uh, a head coach. And then um, we, what else could we talk about? We could talk about you know just his personality in the broadcast booth, the way he would break down the plays. The edges and nose were so beautiful. The way how he talked, his verbiage, and everything that he used, everything that he used, bro, was just so knowledgeable. So you could soak it up like a sponge. At least I can. I can sit down and watch it all day. All I day. It. I love it, and it has nothing to do with just him being an ex-rater, head coach. You know, none of that. It's just to listen to somebody break down the game, like how you listen to some of these quarterbacks after and after these games. Or they lose or they win, you see, oh, we had to bring down the safety. I didn't want to cover three, four, whatever the fuck. Just knowing that people take that time and, and, and get that much knowledge of the game and sit down and watch tape like that, bro. It's going to show that, that they can have, they can be something. Not only, maybe not a player, possibly a head coach. And it's, it's something that you really have to admire. Um, his record was 103 and 32, seven, uh, seven draws. 76%. Um, I, you know what I'm saying? Nine and seven in the playoffs. Now, he had a bad he had a bad AFC conference championship record. I don't know exactly what it was, but I know he lost five games. So he lost way more than he won because he only got one chip. So that explains to you that he, you know, he lost way more. And you said before the uh, the, 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 the miracle catch by Franco Harris. That was in the conference right. game also. That could have got him to the chip. That was about... I'm glad I bring that up because I've seen hundreds of incredible football plays, right? And oh, I didn't see that one. I have to see the replay on that one. But even the replay is my number one best play ever because everything that took place on that play, when you hear the details from the players, it gets even deeper. You understand me? Right. And it, it was to win the game. Yes. I mean, the rate of the thing hit off his chest or some shit. If, if he just knocks it down, catches it, Raiders probably when they, they sack the Super Bowl because they would have been favored that year from my understanding. Instead, Franco Harris made the incredible catch and he got it right before it hit the ground, took it to the house, they beat the Raiders like and they went to the chip and won the chip also. So that's that's crazy. But the little bit you know about that, explain to us, and then we gotta hang it up. Yeah, bro. Um, the little bit I know about that is just you know basically everything like you said. I watched the replay, and it was it was crazy because you know like I said it was like like you said it was like it was it kind of reminded me like of the I was watching the game I think last Sunday. I forgot what team it was. But the player was literally laying down flat on the ground, and he caught the ball. His hand was on the floor, and he caught the ball like that, and they tried to rule it as an incomplete pass. Right. But his hand, the ball never hit the ground. His hand was under the under the ball. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. I can't get what game. They yeah. stole the interception for him or reception. Yes, yes. Yeah, his and, hand and was definitely like, underneath. It could have been the Arizona game. I think that, man, I think, I think you're right. It was the, I think, I think it was that, because right. I, I, me and my man had Arizona. We lost against the coach. I remember that he caught that and he gave it to him. But guys, yeah, bro. It kind of reminded me because I'm like, they, like, and then the thing was, he, he made the reception, but this one, they, they took it from him, you know, and, and you know, he, like you said, he took it to the house, we won the chip. And if I'm being honest, bro, I, I feel that, that that was probably a, what started, the, you know, the, 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 we only got three chips, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, I feel like that's kind of like what started, like you said, that that win mentality. You know what I'm saying? That right, right. You know, whatever, but Tango, let me hold you. Literally, whatever it takes to win. Yeah, let me hold you. Like, we're drifting. Let's go back to Madden real quick. Let's close it out with Madden. 
Explain okay. to us why you really like the guy or whatever he did that you loved about him. He lost six straight championship <laughs> games. Gambino just gave us the information. Go yeah. ahead, bro. No, um, well, just like I was saying earlier, um, like, uh, just, he was, you know, he was in the broadcast until 2009, you know. Um, so I, I kind of watched just very little bit about him. I watched a little bit of him, um, you know, when he would call games on Sundays, you know. But like I said, you know, when you go back and you, you watch the YouTube tapes or, you know, if you're an older cat and you remember, you just listen to how he breaks down the play. He's like, you got your guys, you got your guys, this guy goes here, this guy. He was just so knowledgeable of the game. And like I said, you know, I could sit down and I could watch it over and over and over. All I day. Watch anybody play, break down the game. All day, like the Twilight yeah. Zone marathon, baby. All yes, day. You know, it's, man, it's just amazing. It's really amazing to, to, to hear somebody break down the so knowledgeable of the game that yeah. we all love. It's just so amazing. Yeah, and guys, forgive me if we're talking about John Madden too much, but you got to understand, I'm a big sports guy. A lot of y'all big sports guy. We lost a legend, man. Like, we really lost really? a legend, man. And I don't think to me one show of talking about him was enough. It, it just wasn't enough for me. You know, I think after Imagine. today I'll probably let him rest in peace. This should be the second time. But I love me some John Madden, man. You know that boom, you know, like I don't know if this is too far to say. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. But Madden definitely has to be on the Mount Rushmore of the NFL. Yeah, I mean something. Um Gambino was mentioning it's something like Either put him on all the Madden, his face on all the Madden covers, the NFL like symbol, like Madden's got to get put on something. Because he was successful in everything he did from coaching to the broadcasting and for doing that NFL, you know, that NFL Madden game. The game was successful. Yes. You know, and, I mean, and crazy. Was just a lot beside it's, him, but he was part of it's that. It's crazy that that, that game they even used one of Madden's old playbooks to to to, to, to ensue it all, to start it right. all off. You know what I'm saying? They used one of his old playbooks. That just goes to show how how knowledgeable he was. Come on, like there's no way you can discredit this man. This man was a lit was a legend. May he rest in paradise. May he rest in power and peace. However you guys want to say it. For real great soul, we really lost the legend. And if I'm really telling you, man, that's why I, I have no issue talking about him, like, basically my whole show. Like, dog, I love the dude. Like, that's just how I do. Like, when I love you, support you, I, I'm going to put you out there, you know? Never met him, yeah. of course, but just knowing about him, watching him, watching him work. What I do, I'm not saying I took from him, but there's a lot of stuff that he used that, inspire me to that do what I do. Yes. But the thing right. about yeah, me, yeah, I yeah. make sure I, I don't try to bite nobody. You know, I, I keep the bite in a way. Like, you got dudes right ripping off my shit all day. But <laughs> I'm not going to bite. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to look at you, and I'm going to see where I can take it from where you taking it to that next level. That's how you yes, do sir. it. You don't Thanks, take man. off what these up, styles. You know what I'm saying? But with that, yeah. Chango, glad to have you back. Uh, Big Always game in Lucas Oil Stadium this week. Eight and seven. Raiders going to the nine and six coach. Give them that chat before we get out of Let's here. Go, baby. baby. Gotta give them that smoke, baby. Already snow. Raiders. <laughs> Let's go, baby. All right, baby. Much love, y'all. Happy Always. New Year, dog. Let's go. Happy, Happy New, New Year, Year to you and your girl, baby. Big tag on the building. Hey, Let's get it. To you and the wife. Got okay, the brother. Stay up. Yes, stay up. Okay, guy. All right, gentlemen, uh, Gambino tapped in, Chango tapped in, uh, majority of our stuff, of course, John Madden, uh, went over a lot of other sports topics, game of the week, rated preview, uh, the college football playoffs, looked like another blowout once again, disappointed with Jim Harbaugh, I mean, he fought for like five, six years to get to the playoffs. And you're laying an egg against the Bulldogs. I mean, I know the Bulldogs are tough, but you got to make this here game here, man. Your team was, was, was going in with the most punch in my book. Not the most talent, but the most punch. You can't be, you can't like be losing 27-3 in the third quarter. That just don't work for me. 
I can see Cincinnati because, you know, the team that Cincinnati end up playing compared to Alabama. But Michigan, you know, they beat Ohio State outright. You know, they play some tough teams, Iowa, et cetera. And to lay an egg right now, they just fumbled again. They just threw a pick before in the end zone and fumbled out another drive. This is very bad for Jim Harbaugh and company. Let me get this track here, time for the giveaways. Anybody got questions, you can ask them. I still got a couple minutes. Xavier in the building, I see you, X-Man. Yeah, a lot of people like Georgia. I thought, I, you know, I thought Michigan would give them a game. Obviously, I'm wrong. I just thought they'll give them a game. Okay, let me see if I got any questions here before I move on. Uh, Steve Levine said, Brook, uh, six is beat up on Brooklyn. Let me see what else is on here before we move on. Thank you, Alan. I appreciate the kind words, Alan. I really do, man. Let me see, So Hold up. We're going through. So, okay, so what we're going to get is what I thought wasn't going to happen. It's another Georgia Bulldog. What a catch. Why wow, these guys are just incredible, man. Another Georgia Bulldog, Alabama game. We've seen that in the championship game. Uh, Bulldogs are favored by six. And, and Crimson Tide, they rolled all over them. Rolled all over them. Bryce Young and company put the beats on them. But it looked like if Georgia get back to that game and play them again, I wouldn't be surprised if the Bulldogs come out victorious. Okay, let me see what I can do here. Give me one minute, guys. Man, what's happening here? Give me one minute. I'm trying to get it right real quick. Okay, that's just not going to do it. One minute. I'm having a little trouble here. Work with me. I'll figure it out like I always do. Any questions, y'all? Put the questions up, man. Real talk. Put the questions up. I can walk and chew gum. You know I get down, man. And X, you can't come while the game's a blow. I talk about you knew they were going to blow them out. I want to hear that before, shit. I don't want to hear that when they blown them out already. Anybody can say that when they blown them out already. I mean, man, I know Allen said, Allen said a long time ago before the game started, he said Georgia going to roll them. That I know for sure. All right, give me a minute, guys. We're going to get this beat rocking right here, and then we're going to get going. Any more questions? Raul, well, talk about what's up with the Yankee and A's. Uh, right now, baseball's locked down, Raul. Ain't nothing really happening. I'm just hoping that the Yankees at least get Carlos Correa. I mean, I mean, who else can we get out there? You know what I mean? We we lost out on Seaguard, so we got to get something, man. I'll be damned if we end up with nobody. All right, guys. Giveaway moment. Good luck to everybody. We got one through 20, 21 through 40. Let's get it. Okay, like I always tell y'all, if the ball pops out, I'm going to stop it if it hits the ground or something funny. Uh, like I keep telling y'all, my goal is to make it as, safe, uh, as fair as possible, keep it fair, so that everybody gets a fair opportunity of winning. Good luck to everybody. One through 20. Let's go. Happy New Year to everybody, man. I'm going to keep saying that Happy New Year to everybody. Hopefully this new year bring y'all what y'all want, man. For the last couple years, I ain't going to lie, man. It's been dismal, man. It's been a lot of work, a little coming. Look at these bulldogs running all over these guys. God damn. It's rolling all over Michigan. Okay, here we go. 
give away one. One through 20, let the best person win. No, no play. No play. Here we go. Let me make sure no boys come out. Let me marinate it. I don't care who wins, as long as it does fair. That's my goal, to make it fair. Here we go. We got a winner. There's a ball right there. One ball, you see it. I know you see it, because I see it. I just don't know what number it is. Let me turn it around. Number 19. 19. That's Keith Fager. Keith Fager, four-time winner now. Keith Fager, salute, baby. It's been a minute. Keith Fager is your giveaway one winner, number 19. Now we're doing 21, 21 through 40. Keith Baker, giveaway winner, number one winner. Four-time winner, if I'm correct. I think it's four-time winner. It could be five, but I'm pretty sure it's four. I got the numbers in my book. It's no problem. I can look it up. Okay, 21 through 40, guys. Here we go. Give away two. Let me make sure each four get marinated nicely. Nope, no play, no play. Each four get marinated. Just like chicken, when you marinate a chicken, you gotta marinate each individual part, so every part and every piece of that, you know, every piece of chicken takes a life. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Give away winner number two. Let me swing it back, we got a winner. We got a winner, baby. Thirty-four. Thirty-four. Raul, baby, Raul's back in the game. Big Raul back in the game, baby. Raul haven't won in like weeks. I thought he was going to retire on me the way he wasn't winning. I mean, he won like five out of like ten weeks, and then you ain't hear nothing from him. Raul's back in the game. One chip away from catching Steve, which is the ghost. Let's go, baby. Let me be back. Give me a minute. Let me lower this right here. Salute to Raul, baby. Six-time winner. Okay, let me give y'all a quick summary, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. I mean, I can't express to y'all how appreciated I am because a lot of y'all, when I mentioned I was not going to have the show, a lot of y'all inbox me, no, Al, Al, have it. I'll watch it. I'll watch it, Al. Because that was my biggest fear, like having a show and nobody tapping in. And I totally understand. It's New Year's Eve. Who the hell, like, want to watch Al, your sports on New Year's Eve? But you know what? You guys came out, showed out, participated, stood with me to the end, and major salute to everybody from doing that. Everybody, man. Happy New Year. No drinking and driving. It's the fucking law. You know the rules and regulations, guys. Don't get pinned up. Don't make a mistake. 
that you're going to have to pay for the next five, 10 years. I'm that voice you're going to hear when you make that mistake. I promise you. So don't do it. If you're driving, leave the car home. That's why they got Uber and Lyft. No excuses. Not back in the day where the cab didn't stop for us. Where you was like forced to take your car because you'd be out there ready for dead. They'll leave you for dead taxis. Uber and Lyft picks you up. I seen it. Use Uber and Lyft, y'all. I want another of my people's getting hand up. That's the least I can do for y'all is to remind y'all and be that voice that's lacking in your life. Al Your Sports, thank you guys. I love you guys. Tune into YouTube. Happy New Year, man. I'll see y'all next year, man. Much love.